Yes, brother. Go ahead, you know. Yeah, you're talking about choice and you're giving them a lot of choices, knowing the situation, the miserable situation of the Muslims today, coming from different countries, having still not decided on Islam as their priority, their identity. Everything that they do reflects their cultural background. So as one of, the, uh, of our brothers, a uh, quote from Los Angeles, described it the best, that we are so paranoid and confused. We send our daughters and sons to schools, and we tell them here the non-Muslims, you can talk to them, but you cannot marry them. And at the mosque, we put us a deep wall, wall yes, and here the Muslims, you can marry them, but you are never going to talk to them. Yes. And you're giving them that choice yeah, no. to, yeah. to, in a way, to solve this problem. No, I think you are quite correct, brother. Uh, this is, your statement is a sociological insight based on an analysis of what is happening to us. The, the tragedy of a Muslim minority, and this is true of all minorities, not only in America, but throughout history. There is a tendency for minorities to be schizophrenic and paranoid in this regard, those two psychological tendencies. The schizophrenia that you describe is because of value dissonance. That's how psychologists will call it, value dissonance. On the one hand, because we are a minority and we don't have the resources to build Islamic schools, I'm sure that most Muslim families would like to send their kids to an Islamic school which is as good, if not better, than the private schools where the elite kids are sent, like Phillips Academy and all these other elite schools. But we don't have the money, so over 80% of the Muslim kids attend public schools. And what you describe exists. That's why the kids find themselves in Mr. Jackal, I mean Dr. Jackal, Mr. Hyde situation. Because when they go to public schools, the walls are broken down. They can see Jimmy, Michael, Brenda, Gloria. And they can talk to them in the public schools. But then when they come to the masjid, they cannot talk to Musa or Aisha. You see, so that creates Dr. Jackal, Mr. Hyde syndrome. You see, now how to deal with that? This is not only a Muslim problem, it's a Jewish problem, it's a problem faced by the Catholics and the Protestants. How do you deal with it? Just like the films, we were talking about Hollywood. You live in the public square, but then you don't control the public square because your values are not the dominant values in the public square. In the public school, your values are not dominant. But in the masjid, your values are dominant. So the kids are put in this difficult situation. They go to public school where they are a minority, the values are not dominant, and they have to toe the line there. Now, of course, one thing that the Muslim kids have been able to do, and this varies from community to community, is that those Muslim kids who go with hijab, from a psychological point of view, create psychological barriers. You see, to the point that human beings, non-Muslims, we are all human beings. We listen to cues, codes, and symbols, and signs. We are human beings. One of the reasons why Muslim women who hijab or on a very difficult situation are not assaulted is because they become red flag, no way. You see what I'm saying? So you, but see, if you walk down the street and you are indistinguishable from the others, you are a target of opportunity, whether you're a man or a woman. You see, so that is the psychology we face, you know, as a minority. This is not only Muslim, this is faced by Jews and other groups. It's a problem faced by minorities because the dominant value is different from your value. The other point you raise is that these kids who go to public school and they meet Jimmy, Brenda, Michael, etc., they are more exposed to these other groups. And human beings being what they are, they may develop liking for these people. And since they spend 12 years of their life with those people, they may come to know those people more intimately because they sit next to each other in classroom, then they will know Musa or Aisha who is in the same market. That is one of the reasons why camps like this provide the opportunity for at least the kids to see each other. They may not come to know each other the way they do in public schools, but at least they see them. They say, oh, that's Aisha. Because Musa is a friend of Abdullah, and Abdullah's sister is Fatima. So, oh, that's your sister, Fatima. So he sees her. Something that doesn't happen in some of the masjids where the women are completely cut off from the men, that the boys don't even see the girls to know that that is Fatima. We don't want them to be lobby-dobby the way they do 
elsewhere. But at the same time, we don't want them to be completely cut off to the point that the non-Muslim kid has advantage <coughs> over the Muslim kid because of this state of affair. No, it's a good point. And our leaders, our imams, our scholars have to deal with this. And the parents have to deal with this issue. It's very important. It's very important. And that's one reason why it might be a good idea for families to visit each other. Said, they have to visit each other, like he's talking about. They have to visit each other, so that if you have a family, they have two daughters, the other family, they come and visit. This way the kids know each other. At least they have visual contact, they know each other. And this way, when it comes for them to get married, they can say, yeah, I met Fatima. I don't know much about her, but back home in the Muslim world, all the research is done by the sisters for the brothers and vice versa. So, I mean, you know, like, so you have good intelligence on Musa from Abdullah and Firuz, because they know him, and they tell Fatima, oh, he's a very, he's very aggressive guy. <laughs> so you have information, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that is the way, but here, if we follow individualism of the culture, then we will destroy ourselves because we live in our own cocoon. And then we meet socially and communally at the masjid or at the Islamic center. We have to create interaction between families. And this way we create opportunities for greater understanding and knowing of the kids. Picnics of families. You know, families going out for picnics. So you have three, four families. They go together. The kids play with each other. They know each other. That creates bonding. But if we want to live in our own apartment, the way we do now in America, non-Muslims, that you don't even know your neighbor, even though you live in the same apartment for five years, then we have problems. And this is where Islamic values on communalism should replace individualism as we know it in America. This way we survive as a community.